This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. You tired of me singing? Oh yes, oh yes. Here, turn the camera on. There we go. Hi, here I am, and uh, it's time now for a uh, uh, thirty-minute Marjorie. Uh, you know, look at this. See now, here, here's what I don't this like. This is going to be a 16-minute Marjorie. No, it's not. Can't be a 16-minute Marjorie. Three and a half minute Marjorie. Well, well, how are you determining that? I'm determining that the only time you talk to me is in this half an hour bullshit thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it's the only time we talk. It's the only time you turn the television set off and don't watch a movie. So, and what are you doing? I'm I'm do, I'm getting ready for the show. I, it takes me an hour and a half to get this whole network ready. What the fuck do you think I do every day when I go to work? Well, I know you work hard, and I appreciate it, and you bring home the bacon for us. I and I appreciate that too. I mean, I feel rather emasculated, but nevertheless, you'll you accept know. the situation. What you you'll accept the situation. Oh, well, I, can, I have no other I have no other possibility but to accept the the thing. So if I want to chill out and watch a couple hours of television, so be it. Yeah. Yeah, tell me what else we do. That's my entertainment. You know, this is what they really love, you see, uh, yeah. is the complaining and the yelling and the screaming and the, all that. I'm going to bed in three minutes. What? what? <laughs> what? Is that? I'm down to two but, minutes. But look, I, you're the only thing that gets me an audience around here. I don't even get me an audience <laughs> around here. Who's the blame for that? You know. <laughs> I mean, look, there are there are more people watching than good. normally. So, you know, what, what I mean, good, great. Anyway. So, um, what's yeah, up? N- not much. Uh, what's what's up with you? Nothing. Move your hat up a little bit so they can see your face. You know, it 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 you, it, you hide your face and it's I a hide lovely it well. it's a lovely face, albeit. Work done, but so uh, <laughs> now you you had your face worked on a few years ago. I had my you? eyes done. You had your eyes done. Uh-huh. You didn't have anything else done. No, I had my eyes. Really? Done. Then yeah. your face is in pretty good shape. Well, I had a peel. Well, the peel is is the, what do they do with that? That's they just burn off a layer of skin. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. You looked horrible for days. Well, that's a you, peel. You look like you had gone to the Bahamas and didn't wear a hat. That's happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. So you gave yourself your own peel, is that it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, oh, what's the, the the movie that was directed by Peel? Was Jordan Peel, yeah, Get that, Out. Yeah, I have to watch that again. I know, because you didn't like it in the theater. I liked half of it. Yeah, yeah. And then it like changed. You know what changed? You fell asleep. Well, that could be. <laughs> it's the company I keep. I think it's a very good movie. I'll watch it again. I think it's a very good movie. I'll, I'll watch it we with watched, you. Um, I'll watch it with you. Okay, mm-hmm. we'll make a date. What did you say we watched? We watched um, Shape of Water again. Yes. Oh, we, God, we, that we, is a good movie. We got a, a screener on that. and that uh, just, they actually sent to us me, a the, disc. Best, the best movie of the year is that movie. Yeah, well, I think what will happen, it probably won't win for best picture. I agree. But I think he'll win for best director. Well, how can you win for best director and not win for best movie? Happens, I don't understand. It happens all the time. I know it happens, but I don't understand he, it. He didn't win for best picture uh, at the Golden Pan- Globes, but he won for best director. Oh, really? Yes. Who, what, what won for, for best picture? Yeah, the three billboards. Oh. Yeah, which is good. It's not a bad picture. It isn't. But, uh, can we turn that off? I didn't bring my sweatshirt. Oh, wait a minute. You're, you're complaining. Well, let me go get my sweatshirt. No, 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 no. You're fine. I'll turn it off. Okay. I'll turn it I off. I forgot to bring my... In a do moment. You have a, a in a moment, folks. Do you have a sweatshirt around? What? Do you have a shirt? No, there's one right in back. There's a shirt right Oh, that's just a shirt. No, and I don't have a sweatshirt in here. All right. It's just a little chilly. It's a little chilly? Without my sweatshirt. Really? Yeah. It's winter. She never complains about it being too chilly. She I, always, I, well, except in the kitchen. Well, it, it gets really cold. Oh my in the god, kitchen. it's so cold. See, we have a kitchen that is just pure tile. <laughs> yeah, it's true, and it's, and, and it's twenty degrees colder in the kitchen than it is, and the bedroom's the hottest. If I could do something to this apartment, you know what I would do? The doors in the bathroom and in the kitchen where the tiles are, I would put radiant heating underneath 
the tiles. So when you walk on them, they're slightly warm, you know. We had um, um, heated sidewalks at Penn State. I thought it Did was so, really? yeah, I think I told we you. We saw they're going to do a heated uh, Oh, they're runways. testing it out. They're testing it out. Heated runways on air, air. Which is a great idea, but it'll cost a fortune. It will cost two million dollars. How much money do they lose every year in flights that don't take off because of inclement well, that's weather? That's true. The airline you know. should pay for it. Yeah, not well, city well, taxes. Well, no, but I think that that's you know it's probably going to be some of the people are going to pay for it. They should. Well, they they should want it. They don't share the 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 profits with the city. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so but I was going to say I was mad at you about something. You're always I, mad at me for but, something. But I, well, I couldn't remember what I was mad well, at you for. I come home today from the gym, mm -hmm. and it's like he's asleep. Wait a minute. If, from the gym. Not from work, from the gym. I took off today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm using up my vacation time because we never go away. I was going to take you on a four-week vacation this Yeah, year. right. Yeah, no, i got to get out of here. I, yeah, I've well. been, I've been. I've been here too long. If, if you don't want to go, I'm just going to go to the West Coast and just... No, I want to go. I want to go on a trip. We've been saying this. Yeah. No, well, just... I, I've been doing this thing, and, and I've suddenly decided that uh, it's not going to do any better than it's doing right now. So, you know, what? I can take time off. Of course. You know, when I was mother henning it, thinking, oh, the, the golden gates are ahead of us with the angels singing, saying, welcome to the wonderful world of a big show on the Internet. But, nah, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So we just, you know, we do this. We have a nice handful of uh, many hundreds of viewers a night. And, uh, you know, we just do it. And I, I although I'm, I'm questioning whether I should run the video. Tell me, tell me what you think, okay? I think the, the only reason why I'm here is because of the video. You wouldn't do it if you didn't have your mug all over TV? When I w watch this on Monday morning, that is the highlight of my day, watching myself. Well, like last night, we had uh, very low lit viewership, right? And it's not really that high right now. I imagine it, it should go higher. If we start arguing, it'll get higher. <laughs> I'm not arguing. Uh, uh, that, that seems to be our new format. You can we, argue we with argue. your other girlfriends. I don't have any other girlfriends. Well, find one. Oh, really? <laughs> Did you hear that? She gave me permission, folks. <laughs> now, anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Last so, night. No, so, I, you know, I didn't have a lot of people How watching the video. How much extra time and is I'm it? And I'm wondering what the video adds to the show because just the... I the, like the video. No, but if you hear the audio... I hear the audio. That's it. That's really what it is. And so all you've what? got I mean, is a picture of all these people. But every once faces. in a while, I look up and I see myself, and I like it. Either that or I was thinking of moving it to uh, YouTube from Facebook. The reason Can being... Can you do both? It's too much trouble. i got enough problems getting this on the air on Facebook Live. If you, but, do a lot, if you get a lot of taps on, on YouTube, you'll get a check. If you yes. get like a hundred thousand well, people, well, we're only ten people, uh, ten, 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 uh, ten, uh, ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine people away from Short. that. Here's the thing: that uh, that what I can do over there is I could show an occasional clip from a TV show where I want to comment on it. But when I, I'm there, I want to be seen. So at least for the half an hour that I'm on, or the 45 minutes. It has minutes. to be on Facebook Live? Yes. Uh, why? Because my friends look at no, it. No, but I might, I might do it so that I can quickly put a link. So all my friends that are maybe watching it right now, yeah. hi. But I, I'm getting sick of the fact, sometimes I go, gee, I'd really like to play uh, that clip I saw the other night where they said fuck on Saturday Night Live. Do that. And you can do that as fair comment. Yeah. But, but Facebook will not allow you. They just, there's something, they have like some kind of bell that goes off and it immediately mutes you or takes you off if it's visual. And YouTube, you can? YouTube will allow you because what they say is, well, you're... you're look, look, you're, look, 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 balls. Yep, we, got, we have balls, so do I. <laughs> no, they were floating across. I know, the f floating uh, 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 balls. <laughs> well, they could have been something else. They look like balls from here. What? They were floating across the screen. Those are the, the smiley faces oh, yeah. well, and stuff like, like that. I just saw yellow balls. And then, so there were, now, there were a lot. Go ahead. Do some smiley faces for I her. That'll the, keep her really there happy. There we go. There we go. See, you can see they're, <laughs> they're all there. Oh, they just love you. Uh, see? You know. Uh, uh, so back to the video. You can do all audio except when I come on. I want video. 
That's my uh, request. Uh, that's your request. No, I was thinking of just doing it on. Uh, on, uh, on I, okay, on YouTube. Oh, we're up uh, because you're. I guess we must be arguing or something. I don't know because we're up to more people now. Well, hey, anyway. uh, um, uh Yeah. So, uh, what was I saying? I have no idea. See, I had. Some I have no idea what you say. Let me tell you. Oh, so I come back from the gym and I'm and Alex wakes up and does something and goes to sleep and I go in and the flame on the oven is up again. On the top of the oven you have the stove on. I for, again. I, I, well, there's a reason why I forget to turn it off. To begin with, I put it on low once I start cooking because I don't want to singe the food. And then I'm you cooking. walk out of the room. Let me finish. Then I finish all the food, but I forget to turn the flame off. Well, you got to learn, Alex. Because the flame doesn't make any noise. If it made some noise like tss, even that, I would go, oh, hey, the flame's on. But I forget about it because it's... It, it but it's getting to the point where it's every day now. Yeah, yeah. And, and how is that necessarily dangerous? It's just gas in the air. So tell them what I did. I'm not no, telling tell them you. what you did. Tell I'm them what not... you did. You wrote me a note on a napkin. And put it in front of the coffee maker. Right. That said, flames on stove. Yeah. So what I did is I went and turned it off, and then I knew she was going to go to the microwave because she was cooking some defrosting something. Defrosting something. So I I took a, a match to it and started burning it, and then put it out, and then laid that in front of the <laughs> microwave. It was funny. It was funny. Yes, it was. See, occasionally I make you laugh. Occasionally. That's the only reason you stick around for all the free comedy. That's true. By the way, speaking of comedy, my friend Stephen Pearl did a tweet today that is just absolutely brilliant. Let me, let me tell you what the tweet said. i got to get it right. I can't blow it here. I'm not going to say uh, a thing. It said, um, fact, uh, Larry Nasser's Per, uh, parole officer. Parole officer. Larry Nasser's parole officer hasn't been born yet. <laughs> or his parents. <laughs> or but, his parents. No, but he hasn't. Uh, Larry Nasser's parole uh, officer hasn't been born yet. That's a good That's one. That's true. That's a good one. I like what the gal said on TMZ about the pregnancy, mm. about it blew her vagina out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that what she said? Yeah. By the way, uh, well, this story was on TMZ yesterday, and I, I figured I, I'd like to bring it up because, you know, we're, we've gotten to really love Harvey Weinstein because all the guys out there, we look a lot better in comparison to Harvey Weinstein. So it's nice to see that somebody's taking the heat <laughs> off of us, all right? You know, if your wife gives you a bad time and says, how did he do something like that? You're terrible. How can you do it? Because that's all, how all wives talk. Uh... <laughs> you say to her, well, at least I'm not Harvey Weinstein. And she goes, okay, you got a point there. There is this woman who was Harvey Weinstein's assistant who is now suing him for I don't know how many gazillions of dollars. Uh, uh, and her name is, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to see what her name is. Uh, Sandeep Rihal. Guess must be Indian, huh? Mm-hmm. I don't know anybody named Sandeep who was an Indian, uh, was forced to work in a pervasive and sexually severe, severe sexually hostile work environment. Now, do, do you know some of the things she had to do? You know because you heard the story before. Listen to this. Today's lawsuit by Rihal details frequent, harsh, and anatomy-specific language from Weinstein. Okay, that's... Okay, so you put up with some locker room talk, but goes further. As well as leering. Well, you know, leering isn't something that's disgusting. It's, it's a look. Just, it's just it's a look. It, it's uncomfortable. It's a look. Okay. Then he asked uh, uh, to, uh, he, uh, he then emailed, had her take dictation for emails while he sat there naked. Jesus. Now that's getting disgusting. <laughs> because if you've ever seen Harvey Weinstein, that's the last person you want to see, see naked. <laughs> when he was doing his emailing with her, he was, according to this, always naked. <laughs> she accepted it. Constant pawing. Uh, that, that's uncomfortable. 
And then here's the one that this, this, this should have been put in the job description before she took it. Having to wipe his semen off sofas after sexual <laughs> encounters. That's right. That's right. Um, uh, where do you get this kind of job, boy? I uh, I'm looking for one. Anybody want their semen cleaned up? And clean up used condoms. That was the other part of it. Uh, he he report, repeatedly emphasized his absolute power uh, to the woman and others. He constantly bragged about his power, stating Ms. Rahal and other employees, I am Harvey Weinstein and you are Weinstein University. I decide whether or not you graduate. <laughs> now that's just an asshole. Yeah. Okay. But I'm sorry, when it comes to cleaning up his semen, and he was also, she was also had to line up his, uh, his affairs. Oh, really? That, that wasn't in here. But I but, but the condoms. Yesterday. If he was just jer jerking off, why did he have condoms? Oh oh, you know what? She, it also it doesn't say that in here either. She was in charge of keeping in order all his sexual dysfunction drugs, <laughs> making sure they were all filled. And there was uh, there was one they had to inject or something. Uh huh. No, don't, wait, it, I'm don't, not doing it, anything. No, it's Damien's doing something. I know. I yeah. like to watch. Yeah. But anyway, so um, uh, uh, he, he, she had to take care of his sexual dysfunction drug. So we know that he kind of was sexually dysfunctional. We know that he had an issue. We know that he had a lot of issues. Gesundheit. Uh, so, you know, what do you... I was... He, you're staring. He, he, he's finished. Yeah, he goes there and he I know, but I, his, I like to watch him do it. Yeah, well... But he did it. And I didn't see it. Yeah, he does it very fast. Yeah. He's usually earlier than this. He's yeah. usually... Right after. Right you, soon by as the time on. I come on, sometimes I'm playing an yeah. audio. Oh, he's and, in now. Oh, he is. Yeah. But he, he, he sometimes does it within five Sec minutes yeah. after the yeah. end of the show. Tonight, he must have been hanging out with people and talking or something. Or listening to you argue. By the way, that's the show that comes on before us, and I think you should listen to it. Because he's great. if I get a lot of people to listen to him, those lot of people might turn around and listen to me. Maybe. And, and it's uh, Damien Chaplin. It's The Exchange. It's on at 9.30, Tuesday through Friday. So. 9.30 Eastern Time. Yeah. So anyway, that's, uh, that's, uh, so if you think you've got a bad job, folks, uh, it could be worse. It could be, everything could be worse. <laughs> it could be worse. You know. Um, gee, I wish I had somebody to clean up my semen. <laughs> I just have to wipe my belly and take it at that. <laughs> what, uh, so... Um, uh, I don't. I wish I had something to argue with you about. I don't. Good. You know, except that you got mad at me because I wouldn't take out the garbage because I had to get the show w working. You know, you use any excuse not to take out the you garbage. You should have said to me, "Well, then do it after the show," and I would have done it after the show. Many look a lot. Most nights you go out there, there isn't a garbage bag waiting. Many I mornings I go out there and there's lots of shit. What? Many mornings when I leave, there's lots of stuff to take out. Not every morning. A, a big chunk of it. Sometimes I forget. It's all the way at the end. It's like the, the flame on the stove. Oh, boy. <laughs> and. I, yeah, I'm just going to burn down that kitchen to make you satisfied. That, you, know, <laughs> you know, I'm wait, I'm waiting for the time that I find your keys in the refrigerator. Remember that ad for Alzheimer's? And, and, I, and the milk on the shelf. Oh, by the way, my legs down here are starting. Here we go. Down the here. Alex Bennett down here, update. Down here getting numb. It's my, moving up. I'm getting... My, my leg is numb all the time. The le whole leg? Well, up to about here. Up to about there, huh? Okay. Well, uh, so I, I, well, I took a pill last night that I shouldn't have. Well, I mean, it was a pill a doctor prescribed to me for the numbness, yeah, and I tried it, and then it, it made it things work. work. It didn't well, work. Well, then I the tried it the last couple of days. It seemed to make it a little better, and then the last night said, it was don't, just... The doctor said, don't use yeah, that I, anymore. I, I couldn't sleep, so, you know. Don't don't uh, don't baby me. I'm not babying you. You should do that, Alex. You should do. I don't say it anymore. What, you're not you you're you not do? getting the numbers you normally it's do. It's good because it's what? ten twenty four. Because you're not getting nasty and mean with me. Ah. And uh, everybody, I like it when you get nasty and mean with me because then they feel sorry for me. I don't like it. You don't. That's the only way time you talk to me. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Now, sitting here for like two hours 
afterwards, my feet are like well, not, you, not in good You shouldn't shape. cross your legs. I wonder, I wonder if, uh, if I'm, you know, in this neighborhood, I got to tell you, we live in Harlem. Gentrified and, and I Harlem. Don't, I, don't, I don't know. Is this endemic to black people? But they all seem to be, ha, they all seem to have canes, walkers, That's rolling a, wheelchairs. Older people. No, but. But if you go downtown, it's the same I thing. I see younger people here with canes, you know. I mean, but I, I it's just, it, it, I mean, I'm not saying anything about blacks. Yes, you are. Black. I don't, you are. Okay, but they wind up in wheelchairs and with canes more And let than me I, tell you something. So are we <laughs> going to wind up in wheelchairs. I mean, Adrian has a cane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was using a cane when I first had this. You know, I was using crutches when I had my torn back. meniscus, but I got torn meniscus because of the sports I do. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and I I enjoy the sports. I think it's time to roll over. No, it's not. I'm rolling over. No, it's not. You have to sit there. See, now the numbers have gone down. See, it's your fault. It's my fault. It's always it's your my fault. fault. It's your fault. See, I was I like it when we get up there. And so the my question point. is. Yeah. Is there enough evidence for obstruction of justice? I think uh, he's in trouble. I mean, big trouble. I hope yeah. so. I think we're in trouble, though, because then we get Pence. Well, let's just get rid of this asshole first. Although Pence would be, I think, far more principled. Uh, it, 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 the question about him is how religious he is. Well, the and fact that, that he, he brings that rig religiosity into the, into the office. He doesn't believe in evolution. That's a fact. Yeah. He believes that gay is a symptom that can be cured. You know, cured. Yeah, that can be cured. Yeah. And 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 he can't, and probably thinks Jews have horns. You know, I don't mind a a, a, a president having a religion, but not to foist it on people. Of course. Uh, uh, Jimmy Carter was a very religious person, yeah, and he never once ever. legislated nothing. In, on behalf of his religion right. you know, or his religious beliefs. Right. And that was the so, biggest fear with Kennedy. Yeah. Was that, was that the, the Vatican was going to run the country? Oh, yeah, the Pope, the pope was going to run that? the country. Yeah, well, that was, that but was that, a was a, that was a fear tactic that was being used because it was another one of those fake fear tactics. Yeah. You know, and, and, uh, um, and, and then he got shot and the Pope didn't have time to run the country. Yeah. Then we had a black president, and they did the same thing. What did they say about oh, him? Everything. I mean, every racist thing you can imagine. What he has put up with for eight years is just incredible. Yeah, they were afraid that he was going to hand the country over to the blacks. And the fact is, he didn't do that much for blacks while he was in office. Or, you know, black I think legislation. he did. I mean, well, you know, but... He didn't lead him. I don't. Didn't appear to want to lean that way. Yeah, I got a little fact that I. Well, I'll put it out there in a few minutes about Trump. Trump's claiming that this economy has going up flourished because, because under his watch, and he's correct. It has flourished under his watch, but not because of his watch. And I will explain that. When we get to our citizen panel, because okay. it's something that they might want to talk about. Well, yeah, it's, you're you're really you itch to just roll I over just here. Like to roll you just like over. to roll over. Here she comes, folks. Roll she's leaving one over. panel and she's coming over roll here. Over. Roll me well, over. Um, Lay me down. Well, do it again. Well, who says I'm even going to go to the phones yet? You don't have to. Oh, there. Hi. Mm. Isn't that gross? What do you mean? Isn't that gross? Two old people no, kissing. No, no, I love you. Can yeah, I grab right. your breast? No. Uh, that, oh, the, the Al Franken joke. <laughs> she was awake. I mean, that's the other thing. There was a third person in there that took the shot. Yeah, there was somebody that took the shot, and he said it was a gag photo. And, and, mm. and I know. It happened so fast. I know, I know. Well, I guess I will turn on the uh, phone. I think you Last should. night we had a, we had an all time low response to people calling the show. So let's see what happens tonight. Call in. You know, I mean, I, I have better things to do with my life than this. Like, what? I don't know. I could go out to California. We're going on a trip this We're year. We're going on a trip this year? Yeah, where do you want to go? I don't know. We talked about Spain. I'd like to go. Spain would be nice. I'd like to go also, which would probably be a little bit more, but yeah. Thailand. Supposed Th Thailand? To be, supposed to be incredible. Uh, Thailand, I don't know. They get snakes and spiders and, you know. 
And I, I, I you know, I, I, I don't know. Thailand doesn't appeal to me for some Vietnam reason. Vietnam appeals to me. Vietnam doesn't appeal to me either. Australia but appeals no, to me. So I want some place with uh, indoor plumbing. Federer is playing in the finals again on Sunday. This is what I have to put up with. Well, now. let me tell you, the fact that he made it, the fact that he's 36 and he's number two in the world. Yeah. Well, okay. Anyway, our uh, our phones are open. See, nobody's calling. Why did I even do it? I have no Why idea. Why did I even open the line? Where's Jeff when you need him? Where's Brian when you need him? Well, we're, we'll get them. We had Jeff last night, and we had uh, Phil last night, and we had... Oh, yeah, where's Phil? What? Where's Michael? Let's not even <laughs> talk about that. Was, you know... Uh, <laughs> You're just a troublemaker. Oh, look who's talking. I'm not a troublemaker. Oh, yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, yeah, so you like, let's, let's fight. They like it when we fight. That's a troublemaker. Yeah, well, yeah, they do. They love it when we no, fight. they don't. B uh, run some smiley faces no, across the run. screen if no. you like it when we fight. No, 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 no. Now no, it no. takes about 30 seconds before you'll see all the all the happy faces that will Phil. happen. Huh? Phil, what are you, what are you yelling? Are they? At? Well, it's, it's, you know, it takes them a while to know that I've I've switched on and we're ready to go. And if you don't know how to call this program, you go over to gabnet.net and over on the right hand side of the page, whole tutorial on how to do it. Plus, a little button you push once you know how to turn on Skype and get it online, where you can just click it and see all the smiley faces. Uh, thank you, guys. See now, call in. Yeah, well, anyway, you, you click the uh, Skype and then call button that's there, and it will automatically call us here on the program. So, you know, it's very simple. But now here we go. Oh, look who's calling tonight. Oh, this is good. This is good. This makes it all worth it, ladies yes. and gentlemen. Oh, wait a minute. Wrong, wrong picture. I got to go to the panel. To the panel. There's Mark Thorner, hey, ladies Mark, and gentlemen. How you doing? Hey. hey, hey, that was good. That was fun the other other day. What? Putting the old play program on. Oh the, oh, the old play program on. Yeah, yeah. Is that the way you were running the other day? Yeah, I was running it during the day. But then, of course, Facebook uh, wrote me and said you were using material that's copyrighted, so we had to mute it. So I went back and I. This was because I also dumped it on uh, Facebook Live, uh, the whole show. And I, I went through the whole thing to listen where they muted it. And I listened mm -hmm. to the opening music, and they didn't mute that. And then I had a whole piece of music by Arturo Sandoval that was used as kind of interstitial music between one segment and another. They didn't, they didn't mute that. What they muted was the closing theme song. So, you know, you're really in there protecting copyrights, Facebook. You know, so that's why I'm thinking of moving the show over to YouTube because they would allow that. They wouldn't. They wouldn't give me a bad time. They would simply say, "Your video uh, is uh, is going to be made available to the copyright holders if they want to run a commercial." And you know, that's fine with me. I have no commercials as it is now. It'd be nice to have some. What happened to Phil? He suddenly disappeared. He went to the bathroom. Huh? I don't know. He went to the Who bathroom. Knows? So how you doing, Mark? Doing good, Alex. Yeah. Doing good. Yeah. Yeah. Can't complain. Yeah. It's actually, it's actually cold down here, which is like. Where are you? He's in Florida. Where Talk in Florida? Talking the mic. Talking in the mic. Well, but if, if you put it in the well, middle, well, maybe it I... is in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Where in Florida? Naples. Oh, we have friends. I have a sorority sister who lives in Naples. Yeah, frozen nipples tonight. Do you know the Kaufmans? <laughs> Adrian and Charlie? From our tribe? Um, might be a possibility because we're still kind of in the minority down here. So who knows? Oh, Is wait. that the uh, Naples Kaufmans? The Naples Kaufmans, yes. Kaufmans. K-O-F-M-A-N. Oh, yeah, Just one F. <laughs> yeah. So. We went to school together. Yeah. And they live in Burlington in the summer. Yeah, that's who we go to oh. see every summer. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and they live down, they do live in Naples. Yeah, so I just bitch. said that. Yeah. So. so the Jewish population is small? Yes. I didn't know that. It, there's, a, there's a place in, my, in Florida where the Jewish population is small? Oh, North Florida, there's no Jews up there. Wrong. Really? There are. See? You don't know your Florida facts. But 
Gainesville, there's a synagogue, so that wow. surprised me. Really? Yeah, a small one, but it's a synagogue. It exists. You know? Yeah, where, where a bunch of Jews huddle together and try and fight off the locals. Yeah. 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 It's a college town, uh, you know, Gainesville. Is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. But it, uh, to be fair, it has one of the prettiest campuses. I think the only other campus I've seen yeah. in my uh, UVM, University of Vermont, oh, Burlington. Really? Oh, you've never seen Penn State. Yes, I have. Penn it's, State it, is gorgeous. It's in the Nittany Mountains, and it's surrounded sure. by lakes. Hello there, Rob. How are you this evening? There I go. Good. How are you? There you go. There, there he is, and there's the wonderful microphone. I love he has that microphone. There. It looks so pro. Do you have everything? Do you have compression working on that microphone and stuff like that? Do you process that microphone? Uh, there might be some compression on it uh, on the board. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's just a gorgeous sounding And microphone. it looks pretty too. Unlike the one that Phil bought, which sucks. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know. It's used by a lot of radio stations. And, uh, uh, Listen, I know, got, I, and it's from Australia. I have a microphone I'm using in the, in the other studio, which I built, uh, which I've had since I was uh, 15 years old. Wow. And it's an Electro Voice 635A. Oh, yeah. Which I know to that, this Mike. day, you can buy an Electro Voice 635A. Yep. And mm -hmm. if you look at old, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, old TV shows with Frank Sinatra, he's using an Electro Voice 635A. Most singers used them in those days. If you look at like news reports, they use them. This was the microphone of microphones. And to this day, Electro Voice still makes it. So, mm -hmm. and it's and, a dynamic mic yeah and dynamic mics uh make singers sound pretty good yeah yeah uh, they don't have to push it like they uh, do these mics yeah but it was it was it was a terrific microphone and to this day it works i've dropped that thing i've thrown it across the room i bounce you know it doesn't break it's just in fact news reporters it was the favored uh microphone of news reporters because if they were in a riot, they could use it to hit people over the head. <laughs> and it wouldn't break. And it wouldn't break, yeah. Th this microphone probably I'm using would fall apart if I threw it across the room. So, yeah. so let me cut in, because you said you were going to wait until you had an audience to talk about Trump. Oh, I, I, oh. About oh, okay. obstruction. Uh, no, well, not about obstruction. Yeah. About his claim... That he has, uh, that the economy oh. has boomed under his watch. It has. Well, that's true if okay. we're talking about the fact. But now, what, uh, what, what is the reason? Uh, may I say that in every European country and every Asian country, the uh, economy has gone up. All these metrics he's talking about have gone up better than they have under his watch in the United States. So the fact is the whole world's economy has gotten better, and we've been part of that. It has nothing That's to do with Celebrating him. Trump. No, no. But what do you have to say about that, Phil? I don't uh, follow the rest of the world's economy. Uh, I'm very happy for them. Yeah, but I'm what, sure I'm, what I'm saying is, it has nothing. Trump, it has. It has nothing. Influence. It has nothing to do with Trump. Where's Mark uh, uh, United States is a big influence on the rest of the world. Under Trump, it's less and less and less that influence. Where's Mark? Mark uh, somehow we lost him. He, I don't know, lost his signal or something. Call back. And I don't know. Yeah, call back, Mark, because we love having you here. Um, He's a handsome guy. Yes, good-looking guy. Am I ugly? You, you have a nice personality. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you make me you laugh. Nice personality. You make me I laugh. Make you laugh. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, no. So, well, uh, there we go. There. What happened? Uh, what happened to you, Mark? I guess you got yeah. The, the Skype gods. Um, anyway, what I was saying is is that the economy going up has nothing to do with him. In fact, he may have impeded it here in the United States because it is more robust in European countries than in Asian countries. So go figure. Go figure. It has nothing to do with Trump. It just has to do with the world in general and the world's economy. 
must be all that Mid East migration from uh, uh, the those war torn countries I to Europe. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, anyway, all I know is that all the I'm metrics, sure all the metrics here. that he says are up, like unemployment, blah 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 blah, things like that, all better in those other countries in the last yeah, I year. I also find fascinating that he believes all this stuff now, where last year, or the year before last, when he was quoting what the uh, you know the unemployment figures were what twenty five percent, suddenly we're down to four percent in such a short amount of time. All these people got jobs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did. Thanks to Trump. <laughs> thanks did. to Trump, he put he put twenty percent more people to work in that fast. Wow. He put two chickens in every pot. You know, yeah, he, I, I want to put pot in every in flames, chicken. Flames, this man. Huh? What? What did you say? If, uh, I think he's going down in flames today. I the hope big, so. Big, oh, 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 oh. I hope so. It is. It is. Uh, you know, it wasn't up until now. How do you feel about this, Mark? I mean, I, I up until today, I went, eh, you know, long way to impeachment and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden, I, as of yesterday, I said, I think this guy's going down. I hope so. I, you know, because he, he, they've got a great case of obstruction of justice against him. And every time he opens his mouth... Is something else. Yeah. Or his and tweets it, and his look, tweets. You should be ashamed of your Republican uh, party there who is holding on to the craziest stories. I think the only ones that are holding on to crazy stories is you Democrats. You're, you're, you're praying that uh, beyond prayer that something's going to happen. Something will uh, happen. You know, you've had this with the uh, the hope that maybe the Electoral College would have a revolution and, and wouldn't vote him in, that, that this would happen and that would Phil, happen Phil, and the sky Phil, would Phil, fall. Phil, Phil, hey. Phil, Phil, you know me on this program. I have constantly said... Getting rid of Trump is a big deal. It's going to take a lot of work. It's a long distance. By the way, you're looking thinner, Rob. Uh, between between almost he, thirty pounds. Wow. wow, you look good. Yeah, but between here and there, and I've often said that I don't see the path to impeaching him. You know, and now I see a path, not necessarily for impeachment, to, but to force him from office. He'll sign first because he won't want to go through the embarrassment. Yeah. And that's what we want. Yeah. I don't care what happens. I don't care know. how he, how he leaves. Just make sure you know where the door is. Today in the opinion section of the New York Times, there's something about Melania and how quiet she's Melania. been. Melania. Melania and how quiet. Malaria. She, and how quiet <laughs> she's been. And she's, they're not together. And how she's putting up her own little fight by being, she didn't go with him to Europe. I mean, she's totally. They well, how can she feel about him putting down immigrants? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's not putting down immigrants. He doesn't want illegal immigration into this country. He wants vetted immigration. We all do. We all do. But let's, okay. let's give the people that are here, that have came here as babies, yeah, but so there are certain countries where he's, where he's not going to even let people in who want to just come here for a vacation. That's, well, yeah. that's okay if they if they can't pass the test. I don't want them here. What's the but, test? You know, What's the test for a visitor? Test, make for sure a they're visitor? not a terrorist. For a visitor? Yeah, visitors tend to come and blow things up. You know. Uh, it really? Yeah. yeah. In the United yeah. States, it's homegrown tours. And with that, I'm saying good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. Good night, guys. Wave bye bye to her. Mark, yeah. you look great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> he gets looking better every year. Oh you know God. what? You know one of the reasons he looks guy. better? He has a new camera or something. Or the no, it's just it's just the built-in camera to the uh, Mac. Well, the bandwidth then has gotten better, and and you're really clear. And hello, Bob Eberth. How are you, Bob? I think you have to not too bad. Oh, there he is. See, there he is. Uh, anyway, what I was saying is, is that um, I uh, I always have the feeling that he's you know against uh, 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 immigrants. You know, I feel that everything he's doing is to try and stifle immigration and and the transition of people into 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 America. I, I believe that, you know, uh, you know, we shouldn't have these big immigration tiffs. You know, you act like everybody in the world wants to come here. And I got news for you. We are not a, a great 
do from the shithole countries. Oh, boy. <laughs> do you believe this, hey, Mark? You know, I have to put up two with this out every of night. Thank you for Look, putting up with it tonight, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Two out of three wives have been import models uh, on Trump. <laughs> okay, you know? so we make our case, you know. Right. And you, did, do, you, do you get the, you know, the other day I, I was watching uh, the porno actress there. What's her name? Uh, Stormy um, Daniels. Stormy Daniels. She looks like Marla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this type thing. She looks like Marla. I call, I picked up, I Googled Marla and I showed it to my wife. I said, you know what? Looks like his second wife. You want to see it? And she's like, yeah, wow. She looks like Marla Maples. I was in a restaurant, uh, oh, in 1996, uh, when uh, in Buckhead, which is right outside of Atlanta, a very nice place, Marla Maples was there having dinner. And I didn't say anything to her, but, you know, you looked at her and you could see that the whole restaurant was a hush, how beautiful she was. And she was beautiful. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll beat you on that one. I, I had dinner one night here in New York City and the table next to me was Jackie Kennedy. Okay? Really? Eat me. Eat me. All right? Hey, too thin, too rich. I, I kept wanting to go over to her table and just say to her how much I enjoyed the pictures in Hustler. But... Uh, no. Was her pictures in Hustler? Yes. No. Yeah. The doc yes. Yeah, they had a, the guy with a long lens was oh. uh, outside the Greek island uh, where... Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah. Uh, had a uh, home. Uh, Aristotle and Nassus had a home, and she was there topless, uh, taking uh, a little sun bathing, and that wound up. And uh, uh, he offered the pictures up to many people, and uh, Larry Flint paid the highest price for the pictures of. Uh, of uh, you know, I never would have imagined she had a very great offering. Uh, you know, <laughs> who cares? It was Jackie Kennedy. Okay. Yeah. And that certainly beats meeting Marla Trump. Well, you know, I met. Uh, I, I, I met. I just um, was um, dining in the same room. Uh, I, I met uh, what's his, the first wife? Um, uh, Ivanka. Ivanka. She was on my show. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I've played the interview here from time to time. Uh, I enjoy, Ivanka was okay. She was all right. I liked her. You know, she was she was smart. She was bright. Uh, though you can't tell it with that accent. You know, they all sound dumb with that accent. But uh, I think I, I think maybe Melania is uh, a bit disenchanted and embarrassed by the way her husband is acting. Yeah, yeah. I certainly would be. Yes, Bob. Some of the British papers are uh, reporting that since this went down, she's been staying in a Washington hotel. I thought she was and a bar not in the White House. Really. Well, I mean, who knows? You know. Um, you would think the press would f be able to figure that out. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, do we see her that much? No. You no. know, she doesn't even, one thing is she doesn't even involve herself in stuff like other first ladies did. Like every first lady would have a literacy program or, uh, you know, what's her name? Uh, Obama, Michelle Obama was out puttering in the garden. You know, showing people how to grow fruits and vegetables for themselves. She's not doing anything. No, she, she has something. Part of this. I think she's doing classes. Yeah, for, I think she is doing classes for young girls on how to buy jewelry at Tiffany's. I think so. I'm not, but I'm not she sure. Had, she had the the, the cyberbully campaign, and that didn't work out too well because that's what her husband does. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant there, right there. That was yeah. just. Yes, Bob. They were conjecturing that uh, with all the things, the comparisons between Trump and Hitler and all the stuff that Hitler did, you know, it was funny that before she took off for Florida, she went to the Holocaust Museum. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean. And they would say why she was in Florida. Uh, she was taking a vacation. Yeah. Well, well he's gone. He went to the uh, the. Davos. conference in Davos yeah. and uh, she decided to go to Mar-a-Lago rather than she, accompany him or maybe she, she went to the Holocaust Museum on the way to Mar-a-Lago oh she did go to Mar-a-Lago I, I did yes. hear, I heard she went to Florida I because they said uh, the, the 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 news was saying we don't know why she went to Florida there's been no uh, the, the White House gave no explanation 
Wow. Uh, so, you know, who knows what's happening with that little family, that little happy family. Uh, happy. Yeah. And you don't even see uh, Baron. Well, know? that's good. For all we know, he's a cartoon character, and they simply put the cells away every now and then, and he doesn't come out. He, he's hiding. He kind of looks like he's not happy with the whole situation either. I mean, they had some life. They really need this. Well, I mean, they, no, the two of them had a life. Saying, you know, you I you think. Promise me. Melania is saying, Donald, you promised me you wouldn't win. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think she was counting on that. She's never. Yeah. She always looks like she's being held hostage. That's a, a European uh, look. Oh, I see. Looking like you're a hostage? Yeah, that came from World War II during the concentration camp era, and everybody got that look. Blink twice, Melania, if you want somebody to come free you. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you think, Mark? What's your take on this whole deal? You know, I get this fe feeling that it's still like Trump versus the Helmsley but no one's forgot that someone's forgot to tell Trump that he won. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I'm, I, I, I just like lack of information. I can't ha find, get an informed opinion. Yeah. So that makes it even more difficult. Yeah. Uh, which is, I mean, you know, it's, it's just like, it's an embarrassing presidency. It, it, it has, it has, uh, the office of the president is just not as hallowed as it once was because he doesn't respect it. Uh, and and I, I find that probably the most abysmal thing. He's also, uh, he is a, what can we call it? A, uh, he's an example to the world, you know, and he's not a good example about anything. No. His morality isn't an example. His way of doing business isn't an example. His bullying isn't a good example. I mean, what kind of a message is this passing along to to people? How who just anything he says, he's a he's a consummate liar. Yeah, lies constantly. I once interviewed a guy who wrote a book called The Elephant Man. I'm trying to remember his name right now. He wrote the the book The Elephant Man, that from which the movie was taken about this true story about this man in England who was deformed. Merrick. Merrick. Uh, very good. Thank you. Uh, because my mind's going and I forget these things. Uh, and um, who, who, in fact, who was the anthropologist? Ashley Montague. That's who I was interviewing because he had written a book about the elephant man. And then the book, they, well, because it was a true story, they could steal the book and not have to pay Ashley anything. But Mo I asked Montague, what, what, who is the person who sets fashion? and morality and things like that in a country. And he said, well, it used to be the king and the queen. And I said, who is it now? He said, movie stars. <laughs> but he said, also the president of the United States. You know, if the president decides he wants to dress a certain way. A lot of other people will dress that way. And so I nope. figured that if everybody wants to be like Trump, I guess they're going to have to put on about 50 pounds, wear long ties down to their end of their penis, uh, and, uh, and, and where, and do a comb over that even God couldn't create, you know? Yeah. There's no mad rush for his hairstyle or <laughs> color. <laughs> what hairstyle? It, the only Jealousy. hair, the only, it's a style. The, well, Jealousy. The, the only hairstyle that he has, listen, I could have as much hair as him if I did a comb over too. So, so good, Mark. We have dignity. We figured <laughs> we have we have dignity we figure we lost our hair on top so let's cut it as short as possible on the sides it's preemptive baldness and uh and just say hey this is who i am all right and if you like don't like it wear a hat you, when he hasn't gotten it into that quaff he wears a cap you know that that's why he wears the caps he doesn't wear the caps because he's oh, the caps. huh? He's pro he he promotes the caps. That's why he's wearing them. Oh, well, some of them don't say "Make America Great Again." Oh, no, no, don't say USA, but he, he's say. got a lot of models. I see. I'm pr promoting this cap, which yeah. is a Chinese Communist Army cap, which I love, and of course my Obama T-shirt. How about we do a little uh, equal time bashing with uh, Hillary Clinton? 
has come out. It's it's come out now that uh, she kept an advisor on staff in the 2008 campaign mm -hmm. after it was uh, after alleged uh, sexual harassment. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It was it her harassing him or someone yeah. else on her staff? Uh, somebody on her staff, and it was uh, it was uh, it was. Uh, what do you call it when they, it was confirmed? They uh, they moved her to another location, and he was talked to. So, really, yep. Huh? Can you? What would you do if 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 she came on to you? That's not a pretty sight. You know, that's not a pretty sight. Um, but what would you do if if Trump came on to you? That's not a pretty sight. Well, sometimes they wind up marrying him. What? Do you remember that movie, uh, Seven Beauties, with Lena Wertmiller? Yeah. Uh, no, where no, the no, no. Shirley the Stoller was the person in the picture. Lena Wertmiller was the director. Was the was the director. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, so there was this, uh, yeah, woman uh, who was running the concentration camp, and uh, Shirley she had Stoller. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and uh, she wanted Seven Beauties or whatever his name was, Angelo, uh, to uh, to you know stupor, and uh, he didn't have enough strength, so she put some food on the floor and she said, first you eat, then you fuck, you know fuck, you die. <laughs> that's that's putting some pressure on a guy. Is that how Melania wound up being first lady? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh boy, how do you think he's representing us overseas? Uh, I, well, I guess is other than the uh, reporters, he's uh, they're happy. You know, he he got he he made a uh, statement, and I guess he got some booze uh, because uh, he started in on the reporters again, and uh, and uh, I saw the clip. I don't remember what uh, what he said, whether it was fake news or uh, the, oh, he said that he got very good coverage. Uh, from the press when he was in private life, but once he uh, left uh, a private life and his uh, what, personal what career, world was he living in? Yeah, uh, he said that the press uh, has been uh, vicious and going after him. Uh, that was the, that was the quote. And uh, well, because he because he won't leave us alone. You know, if he just <laughs> shut up for about five days straight, if he just shut up for about five days straight and give people nothing to report or complain about, maybe they wouldn't be talking about him. But That's he, what you but, guys want to do. You want to silence him. No, I want. You know what I want to silence him? I want to have him just tone it down to, say, an Obama or a Bush or a Carter or a, a Clinton level where we only hear about him every, a couple of days a week. Well, Not every fucking morning that, when I wake up. Did you see what he tweeted today? It's the press that covers this stuff. If they'd ignore him, just well, like they should. I've uh, suggested uh, exactly uh, that. I've said that they should ignore uh, Trump. And uh, everybody tells me, oh, no, we can't ignore him. He's news. And, and I go, if you ignore him and you say, okay, you don't like the press, then we're not going to report on you. We're not even going to mention you. It would drive him fucking nuts after two or three days. That's what they should do. Yeah. That's the biggest weapon they have. Shut the fuck up. But you won't be able to get any of them to do it because CNN's no. competing against MSNBC, is competing against Fox, and all of them are trying to beat each other's brains out with these stories. So they take whatever they can gin up. And, and he's the biggest that, thing you can gin up. What? It would be collusion. And I wonder if Mueller would look into it. You know, if the... Uh uh, if the news media uh, all uh, all at once decided between them that they wouldn't cover Trump, then you've got a case for collusion well, against Trump the is news gonna, media. Trump is going to have to testify. By the way, folks, we could use some more callers. It's been slow the last couple of nights. I mean, we got a great crowd here. This is a good crowd. Yes, Bob. Yeah, you were asking about how he's doing overseas. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've noticed is that... Uh, his buddy Aragon is going into uh, Syria against the Kurds, and we're backing both sides. We're backing the Greeks, or not the Greeks, uh, whoever Aragon is, Turkey. The Turks, yeah. And, and we're backing the Kurds. And both sides that we're backing are now fighting each other. Yeah. And, of course, we're going to hang the Kurds out to dry, as we usually do. As we usually do, right. Exactly. Wow. 
you know, I mean, uh, but, uh, you know, I just, I just, uh, my question is how much of this, how much longer are we going to have to put up with this? And I think that the thing that's interesting is that Mueller wants to, you know, have him testify. Uh, uh, and um, he wants him to testify. And uh, first he said, oh, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'll do it. I'll cooperate any way I can. Come on, let me come interview me. And then his lawyers, who he never listens to, suddenly said, you can't do that. You know, you got to make it harder for Mueller. So then they came back and they said, well, that isn't exactly what he said. That's what they always say about Trump. He says something and then they say that isn't exactly what he said. Yeah. And uh, and the exactly uh, that isn't what he said. That is, uh, uh, he has to talk to Mueller. Now, if he doesn't, Mueller can then subpoena him. And if he refuses the subpoena, that is obstruction of justice. You know, uh, that is against the law. That that would that would sink a ship. So, th what's happening now? Without Mueller even saying anything or doing anything. Trump is painting himself into a corner. This is maybe the dumbest man I've ever seen in my life. He lets his ego run away with him rather than letting reason prevail. So, that's my statement on Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, I, so I, I just, I, 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 you know, I, I just don't know what's going to happen, but I do think that for the first time there's a good shot that, that he's, being, he, he's being put in a corner and he's going to have to fight his way out, and I don't know how he's going to do it, you know? He's a fighter. He's not a fighter. Well, well, how's he a fighter? He's a rapper. He, like, he, he's, he, he's, he's, he's a, he's a dirty fighter. There, yeah. yeah. It's all right. As long as you win, you know, you hit him, he hits back 10 times harder. It, it, but he doesn't hit back 10 times harder. What you can do with Donald Trump is you can manipulate Donald Trump. That's the funny part about it. I mean, if you're if you're uh, uh, Joe Scarborough doing a show in the morning, all you got to do is say something about him. And the next thing you know, he's going to be saying something about you and you can manipulate him into doing shit like that. Well, if that's the way it works, why don't you just be nice to the guy and get a decent president out of him? You're not going to get a decent president out of a man who doesn't know how to be a president. He has no concept of what it takes. He thinks that because he's president, he can just wave his hand and make it all the way he wants it to be. And I'm sorry, there are rules and regulations. Now, there's been 45 presidents, and each one of them didn't know how to be a president before they became president. Oh, a lot of them did. Clinton knew well, how to be a president before he went into the office because he was a governor, and it's almost the same job, just a little more complicated. Anybody who was a governor was ready for that job. Senators, you don't hear many senators becoming president, by the way. Uh, senators um, uh, make worse presidents in the beginning because they don't know uh, all the business. But when you're, when you're a governor, you're dealing with the economy, you're dealing with jobs, you're dealing with all the things that you would deal with on a national level as president. So yes, they were, a lot of them were ready. The Republicans are setting up uh, the the uh, who's the, who's the guy that um, Romney uh, to be a senator from Utah. Uh, I guess they want. Um, no, Romney is setting up Romney to be a senator from Utah. Yeah, you know the Republicans. I think, so. the, I think the Republicans don't care either way. They just want a Republican out of out of uh, uh, out of Utah. Uh, yeah, and, pretty, and, you know. and that's all you're going to get anyway, because that's the way they are. Yeah. I lived there for 40 years. Oh, really? really? Tell us a little bit about Utah. Worst place I've ever lived. Wow. The that... worst people I ever met. How are they what? the worst people? That... You, how, how are they the worst people you ever met, Bob? Drunk all the time. <laughs> well, they claim all this Christianity and everything, but you don't really see it in their lives. I lived uh, about 13 blocks from the temple. Mm -hmm. And in Salt Lake City proper, where I was, that was your democratic stronghold. Mm -hmm. The minute you got out from downtown, it was almost all Mormon. And uh, what I found living there is if you didn't go to their church... 
you didn't belong in the neighborhood. In fact, some companies were going to move to Utah, decided they wouldn't do that to their employees because in the suburbs like Sandy and places like that, mm -hmm. if you were a Catholic or a Jew living in a neighborhood, the Mormons wouldn't let their kids play with yours. Mm. And that attitude is still there. That same thing goes on. I have a friend who lives on Long Island in a very um, orthodox Jewish neighborhood. Yep. And he's Italian. And it's a tough, tough, you know, tough living there. Oh, well, I had a tough, sure. I had tough growing up because I was, uh, I grew up in an all Italian neighborhood in San Francisco. We lived in North Beach and Telegraph Hill. And that whole, at that time, that whole neighborhood was nothing but Italians. So much so that you go into any basement in the homes up and down Telegraph Hill, up and down Filbert Street, and they all had a big wine vat in the cellar, you know. Uh, it, it, uh, and and uh, I was Jewish. And, um, you know, I, I heard the term dirty Jew pretty early in my life, you know. And uh, um, my father had to explain to me that it wasn't because I didn't take a bath, but that I probably should take a few more. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it was... Um, it was it was it was it was something to grow up in in an all Italian neighborhood. Yet, I never had a negative feeling about Italians. I realized that the kids who were giving me a bad time were giving me a bad time because they didn't know better, you know. And um, uh, but uh, it was it was not easy. So I mean, I think these things happen in in places where you have a predominant either ethnic group or religion or whatever. In the case of the Mormons. They pretty much own Utah, you know. They pretty much uh, are. are uh, uh, they would lock the Democrats out of uh, legislation and stuff. Just do it without them. Yep. And do everything in the back room. You know, there the, weren't enough Democrats to stand up. You know, the other area that you know when they first when the Mormons first came out. Uh, they wound up settling in uh, Salt Lake City, or what became Salt Lake City. But do you know where else they settled? And it, the, the, that could have just as easily been the Mormon uh, stronghold. Las Mormons. Vegas. Hmm. Las Vegas, yeah. There were a lot of Mormons in Las Vegas, uh, families who moved into that part of the, part of the world. And um, it's a known fact that during the halcyon days of gambling in, in Nevada, you know, after... The Flamingo opened up, and then all of a sudden all the other hotels opened up. The gangsters who owned the casinos hired Mormons to run the casinos and be the pit bosses because they knew the Mormons wouldn't steal. It was just against their religion. And that's why you have a lot of Mormons living in, in, uh, in uh, Nevada now. Did you know that? Interesting if we got a Mormon call up and uh, tell us what they think of uh, how they're treated. Yeah. Now, I do remember that I got also shut out by the Mormons once. When I was a kid growing up in Marin County, I wanted to join the Boy Scouts. Uh, and uh, there was the only Boy Scout troop closest to me that, I, that was fit, viable for me to join was a Mormon-run Boy Scout chapter. They were all Mormon run, weren't they? No, no. The Boy Scouts? No. It was a Mormon organization? No, it was not a Mormon organization. Where did you ever hear that? That's what I heard. No, it was not. But uh, I, I, was kept, I was kept... I was kept... Uh, be troop leaders and, uh, and, and so forth. You're talking uh, a lot of trash. They let gay guys become troop leaders. No, gay guys became troop leaders because people didn't sit around saying, are you gay? And nobody in those days admitted they were. But the point was, uh, here, here is, is that, uh, you, you know, you don't let me finish my story before you butt in with this crap. Because uh, I'm a Budinsky. You said it, not me. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, uh, where was I? Uh, see, now I lost my train of thought. Yes. Oh, so no, so boys, they, they kept they kept me from they wouldn't let me. I, I wasn't allowed to join the troop because I was Jewish. Uh, yeah. So, well, one yeah. of the things uh, the the Boy Scouts 
in Utah would not let anyone who was not a Mormon become a troop leader because you had to be a priesthood holder. And that is part of uh, what happened was they had that uh, where they went up against the uh, Boy Scouts for, with the civil rights and stuff. And the outcome of that was suddenly there was a revelation. Blacks could hold the priesthood and things like that. But that was because of the lawsuit uh, against the Boy Scouts and not letting non-Mormons hold uh, positions in the Boy Scouts. Hmm. Wow. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's but, uh, you know, the Mormon, Mormon is a, Mormonism is a strange religion with a tra strange history. Uh, the strangest part of it, the part that they never admit to, was there was a massacre. Did you remember the, the massacre? I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. Mountain Meadows. Mountain Meadows. In which, uh, what kind of people were trying to come through there? Uh, Some uh, uh, pioneers passing through Utah to go to California, I believe. And they didn't like them. And so they went in and killed them all off. Dressed as Indians. Dressed as Indians, yes. Uh, the Mormons, do they admit to it now? Or do they still deny that that ever happened? They don't bring it up much. Oh, of course they don't bring it up much. That was one of the weird things about Mormonism. The other weird thing, I just thought the whole idea of the religion kind of was like the kid in, where was it, Ohio? Or where was it that it, it started? Where he upstate New York was where the Mormons started. Was that was that it? Where uh, uh, who was the kid? Uh, Palmyra, Joseph Smith. The, Joseph Smith supposedly was presented by uh, the angel Moroni with gold plates. With gold plates, it was plate night. At uh, I used to be a Mormon. Oh, you were a Mormon. Yeah, I. And. Uh, so were you when born, I moved were you, to Utah, yeah. if you weren't a carrot snapping, cricket stomping Mormon, you were worthless. Really? Yeah. If you weren't uh, from Utah and your family wasn't from Utah, mm -hmm. you were kind of shunned, even though you were a member. Now, aren't there some secrets in the religion that they don't, that are not allowed to be told to the rest of the world? Oh, they talk about the. Uh, temple ceremonies and all that. Yeah. And they say they're sacred, not secret. They're sacred. So being sacred, you can't you know, I tell see. anyone. Oh, you can't tell anyone. Wow. Gee, I, uh, you know, it kind of sounds like the Scientologist to me. <laughs> you know, but I may be crazy. So why did you used to be one? Why did I, you used to? What, what happened? Uh, the best way to leave the Mormon churches, be a convert to the church, and move to Utah. Just about most of the converts that move to Utah leave the church because of how the people are there. I respect Mormons that are converts and aren't from Utah. I do not respect any Mormon from Utah. Okay. Uh, and so you did you just... I, did, you just completely got out of the religion. You just said, that's it for me. And how how, yep. how old were you when you did that? Uh, I probably did that about 20 years ago. And how old were you? I was in my 40s. Wow, now that is something, to give that up that late. You would think that, you know, you're a teenager, you rebel against your religion, and you don't accept it, okay? That's how I joined it. That's how you joined it. In other words, you... I was a good Catholic boy. Oh, and, and so you you became a Mormon. Yes. Why did you become a Mormon? Because you didn't like the At, Catholics, I guess. Yeah, I didn't like Catholics, and I was hanging out with Mormons yeah. when I was in the service. And, you know, so I ended up joining, and I learned better once I moved to Utah. What is good about Mormons, though? I mean, like, for instance, I mentioned this thing about the casinos hiring them as pit bosses and so on because they were considered considered scrupulously honest is that a, is that a, a a fair assessment or are they dishonest i i don't trust them I, it's you, like they pass laws to suit their wants and desires mm -hmm. and basically what it boils down to is if it's legal it's moral 
You know, that's why Joe Hill was killed in Utah. Wow. It, you know, so they have uh, legislation and anything they want. So in Utah, you don't have any protection for tenants, but landlords got all kinds of protections. Yeah. You know, and there's no protection. It's a, a right to work state. There's no protection for employees. You know, yeah. and they pass legislation that suits their businesses, like uh, the big car dealership, uh, Larry Miller. You might have heard of him. He owned the Jazz. Mm -hmm. He did not like the fact that used car dealers were open on Sundays because that forced him to have to open up on Sundays. Ah, okay. Because if he closed, the used car dealers would get the sales. So he got legislation passed that you can't buy a car on Sundays. <laughs> Well, you know, I don't. I think in New York there were blue laws for years. You couldn't buy a car on Sundays too, so right. this was not unusual even throughout the As south. Huh? New Jersey still abides by them. It still abides by the blue laws, really. Mm -hmm. Wow. What your your mic like the alcohol level now is oh. going to be point oh five. And one of the TV reporters took a breathalyzer test after using some mouthwash. And was legally drunk. <laughs> yes, my, uh, your mic isn't on, Phil. Well, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> 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 oh boy. Well, anyway, hey, we can shoot. Where is everybody else tonight? This is strange. It's been a light week this week, except on on f Tuesday, we had almost. I think we had a full house on Tuesday. I think you had uh, a royal flush. Yeah, uh, and then all uh, of a sudden, the, the, night, the last night there were three people, and the night before there were maybe five people. Now there are four people tonight. It's a very quiet. All right. Well, maybe you got to start paying more. Yeah. But, uh, uh, Larry, Larry uh, I know that uh, when I had mentioned the Boy Scouts and their association with the Mormon Church, uh, Mark kind of waved his head and said that it wasn't. I'm, I'm looking here. It says, you know, they were joined at the hip, and then there was a split. But what what was their uh, deal with the Boy Scouts? Sorry. Bob? Basically, Bob. Sorry. in Utah, all the uh, Boy Scout troops were run by Mormon wards. Just and in Utah, not across In Utah... The possibly places in Idaho and California yeah. because there were large Mormon populations in those areas. I see. Hmm. Uh, in fact, uh, some of the things I saw while I was in Utah, I went to a place, I used to repair photocopiers, mm -hmm. and I went to a place where the rich California people would send their kids to be deprogrammed from being gay. And I'll tell you, it was the creepiest place I was ever in my whole life. The place was just the nastiest place to walk in. The atmosphere, the energy of the place was just mind-blowing. In fact, at that time, the state of California, if a kid was sent to that place in Utah to be uh, straightened out, uh, if that kid escaped and got back to California, the state of California would not let the child return to his parents. They would wow. go into the foster program because California didn't want that to be happening to their kids. It was a sanctuary state. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it, uh, I, I just, uh, you know, I, 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 as I say, I've had uh, uh, relationships with Mormons from time to time, and I found them to be fine. You know, I just I just can't look at them without thinking they're wearing that damn underwear. Is you know? In Out Burger run by the Mormons? No, because everybody they no. have working there is so clean cut. No, no. And it's, it's a Christian run. It's a Christian run. Christian. Yeah, if you uh, look at the bottom of the cups, they have a uh, uh, a uh, what do you call it? One of those numbers fish. for oh. for a passage from the Bible. Uh, I see. Yeah. So it's in out burger has been that once I once I saw that I just never went back to in out burger. Yeah, I lost my taste for people seeing it. What I, I find with Mormons is the minute you get out of Idaho, Utah, and California, 
most of the Mormons you meet will be decent people. It's only when they get into that one area where something happens inside their heads. Well, I think they're, they, they have a lot of peer pressure. They have, uh, uh, you know, they feel a certain uni unity. Okay. Strength in numbers. Strength in numbers. Um, you know, and uh, the Mormons, let's be honest, uh, elsewhere in the country where they haven't had that strength in numbers have been put upon, you know. Uh, they have been, uh, there's been a prejudice against them. And uh, so they pretty much took over Utah. I mean, they run Utah. Uh, the, only, the only Jew I ever knew that grew up in Utah was Roseanne Barr. And Roseanne came from Utah and uh, always used to joke about what it was like to grow up there as a Jew. So, you know, it was not fun. It was not I was, fun. Uh, I was in Salt Lake City, I don't know, about six months ago, and I noticed that it was very clean. Uh, there was no graffiti. Uh, there was these little rail cars that uh, that transported people, mm -hmm. and uh, but it was it was quiet. There were no there was no traffic on the street. Uh, it was it was a very quiet place. The one thing I miss about Utah is because of the influx of people from other states. I'm into uh, all kinds of ethnic food, and I lived basically downtown. Mm -hmm. And within 15 minutes of my house, I could get Russian, Bosnian, Thai, Indian, wow. Vietnamese, Chinese, and all of it decent. One thing Utah Salt Lake City has is a decent uh, restaurant industry there. Mm -hmm. And we miss all those restaurants. Really, especially being here in upstate New York, where I am. Yeah. Well, uh, now, aren't there a lot of wineries now in upstate New York? And uh, yeah, there always have been. Yeah. yeah, there are. Always have been, Phil. Yeah, I understand it's a flourishing uh, 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 part of the state for that. Where upstate oh, yeah. New York? Yeah, yeah. They, they always, they've always had wineries up there, Phil. The Taylor family is like uh, the biggest. I don't know if they still own the most vineyards, but it used to be the Taylor family. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, black you, Angus cows and things like that are, uh, are very, uh, they raise a lot of them. Do you know? Yeah, what? I see a lot of cows and sheep in my area. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. live in a very, very rural area. We don't even have a grocery store in my town. Uh, you're, oh, wow. you're in what state now? I'm in upstate New York. I'm in Whitehall. Okay. My God. I'm about 20 miles out of Rutland. Vermont. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 you know, I often, um, um, he, he, you want to talk about things that are, shall we say, what, antiquated, don't exist any longer? New York City years ago had how many delicatessens? Hundreds oh, and oh, hundreds okay. of delicatessens. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how many delicatessens are left in New York now? Not many, Alex. I think like three. <laughs> you know, the Carnegie went, the stage went. Uh, the only one hey. left, I think, oh. is the Fifth Avenue Deli, which isn't on Fifth Avenue anymore. The, uh, the uh, uh, what do you call it? The one that was out right next to where I lived. Uh, you know. Bars? Uh, Huh? No, no Zabar's isn't Zabar? a delicatessen. That sells Jewish food, but it's not a delicatessen. Uh, um, uh, you know, the, the, the one where you, oh, God, my mind is a blank tonight. I may as well give up. Uh, you know, you always see pictures of it. It's, uh, but it's the one where Harry Met Sally was shot. Uh, huh? Second Avenue Deli. No, no, that was, wasn't the Second Avenue Deli where they shot that. It was uh, uh, not, not Ratner's. Rat, no, not Ratner's. Ratner's closed down a long time ago. I know. Was Lower Manhattan, right? Lat Ratner's. Yeah. And that wasn't really a delicatessen. That was a dairy restaurant. I don't think they even exist anymore. Yeah. E e uh, That's a long time. I haven't been in there since the '60s. <sighs> yeah. I remember when I know in the in the outer in the boroughs you still have the occasional deli, Alex. It, 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 very few, very yeah, few. The supermarkets all carry but I mean, the it, 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 There was a time where delicatessens were everywhere. Yeah, you know. When I was very small. My aunt took me to a chock full of nuts automat. 
I remember yeah. those. That was the coolest. You put the coin in. Uh -huh. oh, let, let, let me answer this a second. Or let me hang up on this, and then let me call him right back here. For some reason, he's having a problem. Wait a minute. Oh, let me accept him, and then let me hang up on him, and then let me call him again. Here we go. I'll call him. This is uh, Johnny um, I, I, uh, Peru Perulis is the way the name is pronounced. Johnny, yeah, pick up. There hey! Yeah, okay. I, call, I called you. I noticed you just wanted to be accepted, and I hadn't done it. Uh, turn on some lights uh, so we can see your face. Yeah, I'm a man in the shadows. Hey, Alex, this is John Perulis. I, yeah. I've had to change my um, login so many times, and I went to Classic Skype, and uh, it just wouldn't work for me, so I... But went back to what, the latest iteration. Whatever, but I, I just accepted you so you can call any time without any problem. Now, I had to call you back. Turn on oh, some okay. lights so we can see you. You you look like uh, you're in a witness protection program. <laughs> no, I'm not. But oh, Okay, I, if I the only that, light I, The only light you're okay. getting is from your screen on your monitor. Am I yeah, right? right? Okay, hang on a second. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I got a... Uh, I gotta uh, do some stuff first. Um, there's a, there's, gotta be, there's gotta be a light switch somewhere there. <laughs> yeah, guys, just give me a minute. I I gotta locate in a different room. Uh, I'm just trying to unhook some crap that's hooked oh, up. Oh, so to you're my gonna computer. move the whole thing to another room? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The lights in that room, I guess, huh? Yeah, there's lights in that room. Okay, guys, just uh, okay. He's now going to move, now. ladies and gentlemen, into another room where there are lights. Why does they have lights in that room? Doesn't every room have lights? <laughs> That's the torture chamber. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I hope you don't see anything X-rated as I walk around this place. I don't have any skeletons in the closet or anything. Just in the. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's great to be back on the show. Uh, uh, yeah, great. Terrific. I just got a thing from Renee. We haven't heard from Renee since the first of the year. And what about Brian? Where's Brian been? Uh, Brian? Uh, ask, ask Renee if she's still hiding from the uh, the uh, North Korean alert. Well, she says, Aloha, Aloha, Alex. I hope that all is well. Uh, wait, I have been listening. I know the fun that you are having, and now I have Spectrum Cable, and it's stable. I moved my stuff back into the house. However, I have many, many boxes to unpack. I want you to know if you feel that I'm a plus on your show, and if, it, if the fighting helps, uh, it does help. We love you, Renee. You're one of our uh, firstborn, firstborn, you know, uh, on this whole thing. Uh, 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 this is a dumb question. Let's talk soon. Yeah, call us, Renee. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. We want to hear from you. We love you, and we were worried about you. I get I get worried about people. Rob knows. I wrote him last week. I get worried about people when I don't hear from them because I, I'm concerned. I Even with Phil, I'm concerned because, you know, he could die at any minute with that prostate thing. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Anyway, John, did you did you have anything in particular you want to talk about? You just want to join in on the fun? Yeah, uh, I've been doing movie a week. Uh, I've uh, trying to catch up on all the Oscar nominations. Uh, yeah, I got great rave reviews for Darkest Hour. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of uh, Churchill because you know he was a racist pig pretty much, but. Uh, he was the man to lead England, and God, after the film, I wanted to go out and fight Nazis. I, I mean, there. I, I, I think uh, Oldman is a shoe in for best actor. I'll tell you, uh, I, I, I didn't like the picture. Oh, you didn't? I didn't. Uh, I was disappointed. But to begin with, I'm tired of actors being nominated for performances in which they're being given an award for doing an impression. Mm, uh, and and okay. that happens okay. a lot. If you think about it, there was it's about four years the, running where both the male and female winners all had portrayed somebody and were doing an impression of them. And everybody thinks that's great acting, but that's not great acting. Yeah. Great acting is when you portray a normal person and you give it weight, you know, and you give it substance. Well, um, what did you think of Daniel Day-Lewis winning the Oscar for his portrayal of Lincoln? Would you call? Yeah, I mean, how I, uh, you that was another. That, uh, that was another example of an impression of somebody. I I didn't feel. I, yeah. Again, it, it's kind of like 
it, it's a kind of grandstanding thing when you play a character. Idi Amin, what's his name? One for Idi Amin. I mean, we can go on with uh, Helen Mirren for, for the Queen. You know, we on yeah. and on and on. Yeah. And it seems that whenever somebody does an impression, they get the lead in uh, in the in the Oscar race. And uh, I I thought, for instance, there are, there are a lot of good little performances this year that were terrific. And uh, uh, but uh, in fact, I didn't. Who did, I didn't vote for. I, I voted for James Franco for the Screen Actors Guild when I was voting, mainly as oh. a protest vote uh, because oh. I didn't like the way, because of anonymous complainers, he was being treated. And did you hear the latest? Everybody, some place upstate was supposed to open up and I don't know which movie it was, a musical version of a Woody Allen film. And oh, they've, no. and they've canceled, <laughs> they've canceled it because of the accusations against Woody Allen, which are longstanding accusations by his right. uh, uh, stepdaughter, um, uh, 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 Dylan. And steps and son. Dylan yeah. Farrow. Wait a minute. Dylan Farrow, mm -hmm. uh, that were investigated by the police and, deemed to be insufficient, you mm. know, not to be creditable. And yet everybody is now, uh, people aren't going to work in his movies because of it. And, uh, you know, this musical got canceled. Uh, where do we, don't we separate a man's talent from his personal life and from his personal foibles? Not uh, anymore. We, we don't anymore, but, you know... Uh, uh, to to negate Woody Allen's art, what what are we going to do because of Woody Allen? These Woody Allen accusations, we're going to take all his films off the off the racks and not be able to let you have access to them. You know, I mean, oh. do we do this or or do we say that the art is one thing, his morality is another? And let the public decide whether they want to buy something or not, or whether they want to go to the musical or not. Just like the yeah. actors and actresses are deciding whether they want to be in his films or not. They're doing that. You know, this is a problem uh, in art, in separating art from the artist. H.G. Uh, Wells was a horrible dad. Uh, uh, T.S. Eliot was horrible to his wife. Um, I well, was he, he'd, he'd be with... terrible, too, if the T.S. stood for tough shit. You know, <laughs> I was friends with uh, Frank Herbert, you know, Dune. Yeah. His, Dune's son. And uh, Bruce. His, uh, Bruce died of AIDS, uh, oh, I don't know, about 10 years ago or something. And uh, he told me, Bruce told me that Frank was horrible. He used to beat him. You know, if he put something back in the refrigerator and it was not in the right place, Frank used to beat him. And, uh, you, you know, I, I mean, you hear a lot of this about artists uh, not being good parents or being abusive to their wives. Uh, Eugene O'Neill, for Christ's sakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a horrible, horrible to his wife. And, you know, I see what the point you're making, Alex. I mean, can, does that mean we have to dump their art? Well, you know, what, what, I, I what, to... what we're doing is we're going through a purge. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, uh, what's his name? The uh, comedian Louis C.K. makes a movie. Then all of a sudden these revelations come out about him and the movie is pulled from distribution. And yeah. it, I think Louis has bought the film up now, but otherwise it would be completely hidden from the world. Now, I've gotten to see it. It's not a great film, to be very honest with you. I think he, he's capable yeah. of better. Yeah. But nevertheless, you know, do we destroy people's art? Art. We did that with Fatty Arbuckle. A lot of his yeah, films right. were destroyed. Huh? We did that with Disco. Well, it, 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 <laughs> well Disco it, it, deserved to this, die. Disco deserved to die. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, but do do you destroy a person's work because of his foibles as a human being? I mean, uh, I, I worry about all the films, the good films, that Harvey Weinstein has his name on. A lot of them, all the Quentin Tarantino films had his name on them. Yeah. Uh, those are some of the greatest films made in the last 20 years. Are, 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 are we, artists, too. Huh? Like Picasso. He was known to be a womanizer. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, had, a big, big and, womanizer. Uh, yeah, big one. Uh, and, and then uh, other politicians. Uh, who was it that there was the, um, 
uh, discovered electricity and was the uh, uh, ambassador uh, to France. Tesla? Tesla? I, I mean, uh, Nikola Tesla? No. Frank, are you talking Franklin. about Edison? Franklin, Benjamin Frank, Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Oh, Franklin, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, he didn't so it, it, let me say this. Out. He didn't invent electricity. He discovered he just, it because discovered, electricity right. already existed. Yeah, I understand. But uh, What about you know, Faraday? I thought Faraday. Uh, uh, TV. No, Faraday. no, no. Radio? No. You, the Faraday you're game. talking about no, Philo, Philo Farnsworth was TV. Oh, was, yeah, yeah, Philo Farnsworth. Right. Yeah. In the old Nabisco building in uh, Battery Street. Uh, in you San know, Francisco, Vesper. in San Francisco, yeah. there is a building and it has a, a plaque on it saying this is where television was discovered. Because for years, uh, Sarnoff at RCA was trying to prove that Philo T. Farnsworth didn't invent television. But he did it at least yeah. Yeah. five years, maybe more. They, they think that, in fact, Sarnoff stole his, stole his idea. Uh, but... Yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is, is that uh, you know, I mean, uh, do we do we because uh, Picasso was a terrible person, terrible to women, uh, horrible human being. But am I going to say I'm never going to look at one of his paintings again because uh, yeah. of his personal yeah. problems, his personal demons? Uh, am I going to say let's burn all these paintings? You know, because of his personal basically what demons? they're doing uh, to these um, uh, current. Uh, actors yeah and are we going to now negate all of woody allen's films because of the charge of his uh, daughter his stepdaughter that had been also checked in by the the police looked into that one years ago and decided that there was no basis for uh for for a claim that these things were true is so, he the mean stepfather i don't know if he was a mean stepfather but i certainly wouldn't be, want to be married to her God, she's got. Well, she's, you know, I don't know if I, I could be as generous to Woody Allen as you are, Alex. Uh, I mean, there's a creep factor about the guy. I think uh, this thing where you wear your soul on your face. I mean, just to look at Woody well, Allen. Woody Allen gives me the will. Woody you know? Allen created a character that was creepy. You know, he was always kind of a nebbish, and he was a creep, and he was always kind of. Well, I, you know, but uh, yeah. uh, so that was his stock and trade. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, he still, I think, has made some great films. Yes. That would yeah. be, it would be a sin if those films disappeared because of these allegations. And what we're going through now is a very dangerous period, much like the blacklist era of the 50s, in which people who were very talented were not allowed to use their talent, many of which never were able to come back either. I mean, they... Yeah. Went off into the, you know, when finally the whole thing blew over and some people were coming back like Dalton Trumbo and so on. These yeah. people had had their careers destroyed so badly that they never yeah. came. A lot back. of these guys are done. These In guys, the, are, you, 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 well, uh, what's I, his name? Um, the first one. What's his name? Kevin, uh, see, well, yeah. Louis, who? Kevin. Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Oh, I, I think done. I think he's done. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yet all of them are just allegations. Nothing's ever been proven. But nevertheless, we're talking about the court of public opinion here. You know, this is where they're yeah. being destroyed. Yeah. They're not being destroyed in in the, in court. Uh, and uh, Kevin Spacey, I think his career is pretty much over. I think I would agree. certainly Weinstein yeah. is never going to recoup from this, and he just sold his mansion on Long Island because I think he needs the money. Uh, he's never going to recoup. Louis C.K., I think, will make a comeback. I, he's a comedian. Uh, what was said about him wasn't that egregious. Uh, Fox did an internal uh, uh, investigation and found that under their watch, he never did anything improper. Okay, so I think all that, given maybe given time, it may be several years, but eventually Louis C.K. will resurface and do something, and then all will be forgiven because the thing he does is so good that, you know, we have to kind of look at it, okay? What about Matt Lauer? Matt Lauer's through. He's done. He's done. I'm just wondering if Kevin Spacey, uh, you know, come back you, you have to remember that it, it's easier for a Louis C.K. to come back because he's a comedian. 
comedian, and right? people say, oh, well, maybe he was just goofing around, you know. Uh, even the same thing with Al Franken, okay. But with with uh, yeah. in in the case of Matt Lauer, his entire reputation was based on the public loving him on television in the morning, mm -hmm. and so when people don't love you anymore, you're not of any worth to the network. Of course, they're beginning to find out now he never was any worth to the network because when he left, the ratings went up. <laughs> you know, so they, you know, the, the, all these years are going, we paid him $20 million a year for what? You know. Did Kevin Spacey be recast as a bad guy and then no. start? <laughs> no. no. He, he played a bad guy in House of Cards. Yeah. You know, well, it, you know as, as a lecherous bad guy. I mean, he's never, he's ne most of the time he's never played good guys. It's not been his, his, his specialty. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, James Franco, uh, I think, I think Franco will probably get out of this. Um, ben Affleck is the latest one who, uh, he's not going to give the Academy <laughs> Award to Best Actress, which is normally the, the actor from the year before who won, gives the Best Actress Award out. He said he's not going to because he doesn't want to distract from the event, um, so that they, you know, the Academy dodged a bullet on that one. How about Steve hey. Wynn? Steve Wynn. Steve. Uh, yeah. I would believe everything that anybody says about Steve Wynn. Okay, how about how about you, Mark? Mark, you had a smile on your face. Do you agree with that? The guy owns like what the biggest chain of high-end casinos. Go oh boys! <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, and, and you don't like. think you don't think, and he's in Las Vegas, and you don't think he, you know, has somebody to ride his dick. I, I think uh, whatever they're saying about him is probably true, and not, and it's only half of it. Okay? And they're saying the gaming officials were aware. So. Oh, really? You, the only thing I liked about him, they showed his two of his hotels today on TV, and one is the Win, and next door to it is an identical, <laughs> identical replica of that hotel and it's called encore i think that's brilliant you know uh but uh i think steve Wynn, he's so powerful i mean a lot of these people say well i i i i guess i'm going to step down blah 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 well in the case of mario batali okay big chef yeah. uh, in an industry that by the way is rife with that kind of behavior all right uh uh, he he says, okay, well, I guess I, he loses the TV show he's doing. He loses all the uh, all the money from the TV shows and stuff. But the sauces are still out there, and the although I noticed at Fairway, they had the uh, Lydia Bastianich uh, sauces, and there were about five rows of them. And Batali, there were only like <laughs> one row of Batali sauce now, you know. Uh, but. Uh, I, I, he he still he has all these uh, Italy's around the country now that are opening up, and he has the one in Europe, and they make a fortune. Uh, the Italy here in, in New York City on off of Fifth Avenue makes I think something like sixty million dollars a year. Jeez. So huh. you know, uh, is he going to back off of that? Well, he could say, okay, well I'm taking my name off it, but he's not selling any of that out. He owns all those. His his his. Income on TV. The only thing TV did for him was give him the cred to sell the sauce. Yeah. The notoriety. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, there's also an accuser uh, coming out against Steven Seagal. Oh, I'm surprised. Well, Seagal's a weirdo, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was, what, he was driving around a, a tank I'll in Arizona you, I'll, with I'll Joe you, Arpaio I'll, I'll arresting I'll, illegal immigrants I'll or tell something. You, I, have to, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, Seagal is a really funny guy. I had him on my show in San Francisco once. And he comes in and, you know, he's doing his gruff thing and all that. And I had Dana Gould on the show. He's an old friend of mine at the time. Oh, and and, and uh, Dana said, uh, he said something to Seagal about something and as a joke. And Seagal looked over at him and growled. And he said, uh, are, are you going to kill me? And he says, the day isn't over yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Fully in I character. Have a who swears that Steven Seagal is actually Steve Siegel from Staten Island, New York. He's supposed to be Jewish. He is. Yeah. Uh, I would say probably, uh, probably a good, uh, 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 a good chance of that. Uh, he, uh, let me see, S Steven Seagal, um, 
uh, let me see here. He, um, I'm trying to think, he started out, how he got into films is he was somebody's judo coach or something like that. Uh, and I can't mm-hmm. remember who the studio head was. And uh, I think it was whoever was the head of Paramount at the time. Uh, and he, um, it might have been Robert Evans. He might have been Robert Evans's um, um, uh, judo coach. And he said, you know something? I could make you a movie star. And so he started putting in <laughs> movies. And that's how Steven Seagal got into movies. He said, I didn't know how to act or anything else, you know. But all of a sudden, if a guy who owns a studio, runs a studio, says, I'm going to put you in movies, you don't say no. You know. So that was how. Hey, Steve- Sam Rockwell, best supporting actor for three uh, uh, billboards. Yeah. Amazing performance. Yeah, very, yeah. very great performance. But I'm telling you, I think the better performance, and you probably haven't seen the film yet because it's not as easy to see, is um, Richard Jenkins in The Shape of Water. He's brilliant in that film. Just brilliant. As yeah, is, that's, one of, that's one on my bucket list. I've got to see that one. As is Sally Hawkins, as is Olivia Spencer. Uh, and all of these people have been nominated. Uh, for Don't Academy waste Award. your time on uh, Phantom Thread. My wife and I just walk, walked out on it today. Uh, you know, it's dreadful. Oh, man. I, I, really? I mean, it's like being tied to a chair, you know, with you, a, like a clockwork orange and having toothpicks. You, you uh, want me to you tell know, you, you your want, let me tell you a little movie to go see, <laughs> a little movie to go see. It, uh, I don't think got nominated for an Academy Award, but did get nominated for Best Ensemble at the Screen Actors Guild. And it was nominated for, I think, Best Picture at the Golden Globes. And you can see it on Netflix. Uh, it's called The Big Sick. We watched that and just said, what a good little movie that is. You know, a terrific movie. Uh, and it's a true story. It's uh, This guy, uh, 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 what, what, what's his name? I get him mixed up with Aziz Ansari. This is the other guy. And he, um, it was a true story about he and his wife. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, lovely movie. Uh, and uh, I suggest seeing that. And you that's not going to cost you anything if you've got Netflix. You just look it up yeah. and play it. Um, and, I, and take it from me, you'll come back and tell me, thank you for telling me about that. It's a good little film. But to me, the best picture of last year, I think certainly the Oscar for the best director should go to Guillermo del Toro. And, and that film, to me... When you talk about pure craft, in other words, if you're going to say, what's the best picture of the year? You're not saying, oh, well, this guy had a great acting performance, so let's give it best picture. You're saying, taking all the elements of making a movie and putting it in one place, who did the best job of taking all the the crafts of the art and, and using them? You would have to say The Shape of Water is the picture. 17 it, nominations or 16? 13, 13. Yeah. It, 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 13? It, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, okay. brilliant script, brilliant acting, brilliant direction, beautiful cinematography. Yeah. Has anybody else hey, but seen? it was the creature from the Dark Lagoon. The, the, it's you the know? creature. Well, he, he admits it. He said, that when I was a kid, I loved the creature from the Black Lagoon. And I always yeah, felt the there Black was a Lagoon. story there about how much that creature loved the woman. In fact, if you ever watch the Creature of the Black Lagoon, there's a very sexy scene in which she's swimming along and he is swimming underwater under her. Yeah, he's watching almost, her. Yeah. No, but <laughs> almost like he's fucking her. And so I think... Freaking he, fish. <laughs> that image, I think, stuck with him and he said, well, what if we took a creature like that and someone fell in yeah. love with him and he fell in love with her? And that's what this movie is all about. It's really a love story is what it is. And it's, yeah. it's an incredible yeah. film and everybody in it is superb, including... Um, uh, Doug John, uh, Doug, what, what's his Doug name? Jim Douglas, uh, uh, Doug, yeah, um, Doug, Doug, he's the guy who plays the, the creature on, uh, on Discovery, too, on Star Trek Discovery. Uh, Doug, uh, I'm trying to remember what the last name is. Anyway, he is terrific as the creature. I mean, this is a guy who always, all the parts he plays is usually wearing prosthetics of one sort or another <laughs> and somehow can still do an acting performance wearing all that crap, you know. Plus, he, he, he is a contortionist of sorts and can contort his body 
in certain ways that makes him look somewhat unearthly. Uh, uh, Doug, uh, oh boy, what am I? What am I going? Uh, what? 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 Uh, hold on a second. Shape of water. Hold on, I got to look it up. Otherwise, it's going to drive <laughs> me crazy. Uh, uh, here, IMDb. Uh, shape of water. Oh boy, I'm. Uh, now let's see if I can type shape of water. Here we go. And the name of the actor is. Um, uh, 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 Doug Jones. Doug Jones. Oh yeah. Uh, and I should. I wanted to go. I went out of my way to go get his name, because. I feel that an acting performance like that, you need to know who the person is. He, he really deserves it. And he's on Star Trek Discovery now, playing uh, a guy wearing a prosthetic, again, for a face. And he's just, he's a great actor. But he didn't get any nominations. That's what I was kind of sad about. I thought he should have gotten a nomination. And whatever happened to, uh, what's his name, who played, you know, played Golem and is in Planet of the Apes. Uh, Andy Circus. Andy Circus. They said he, they thought he was going to get a nomination for the latest Planet of the Apes picture because he was brilliant in it, just brilliant. But we've yet to have somebody be nominated for wearing a costume or being, you know, digitally recreated. Because they, these actors like Andy Circus actually go on, they're really acting. And they're just simply wearing cameras on their faces and so on. All the reactions on his face are the reactions of the actor. So, mm. you know, it's a real job of acting. It's just they're putting something over you, an overlay. But you're doing the acting. So, You bored, Phil? Uh, not entirely. Uh, <laughs> but I, don't, I don't know a lot about the subject, so I can't really add much to it. Yeah. Yeah. But these are some movies you should see, you know. Uh, and, and Shape of Water is certainly deservant of all the praise that it's gotten or all the nominations it's gotten. But we have, you know, the, the, the big uh, spoiler in it is Three Billboards, which is a good picture, you know. It's a great picture. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to uh, take that away from it. But um, I think Sally Hawkins is a better performance than Frances McDormand because... Sally uh, Hawkins did her part completely mute. Mm -hmm. She can't speak. And her whole, you just see every feeling that she's feeling without her saying a word. It's it really. Yeah, that's a genius. I, I've only seen clips of the film. I, I'm probably going to see it this weekend, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I kind of, my instincts are saying she's going to grab it for best actress and, uh, yeah, I mean, we didn't. Yeah, know. I just hope Sam Rockwell wins a, a Academy. You know, Gary Oldman should get it too. I mean, that guy is a brilliant actor, and he's done so much in the industry. He's, you know, every role he's. You, you he's know, a different he's person. you know he's a rabid right winger. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm you not know, a lot of these guys are. I, I've I mean, never let that spoil spoil my opinion of his acting. I like Bruce Willis. You know, I was a Greenpeace crewman for six years. Yeah, and one in one of the uh, Bruce Willis scenes, he's uh, chucking uh, driving golf balls off an oil rig and hitting a Greenpeace boat. You know, and he's he's a, a, a you know a Republican right winger, but I love Bruce Willis. You know, yeah. uh, Arnold is a Republican. You know, I well, love. You Arnold. know something though about 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 him, uh, not uh, Bruce Willis, is that he, he he never he didn't really like go around proselytizing his politics. Yeah, right. You know? Right. He Big he one. he let everybody know, hey, I'm on the right. I uh, this is the way I am. You know. And that was it was left at that. It's not like he went on television and started spouting right wing politics. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, what uh, which boat were you on? Were you on the one that got confiscated by the uh, New Zealand government? I think it was or uh, I, I well, I um, was a uh, camera operator. I, I covered uh, two big campaigns for Greenpeace, one in 83 when we went to Siberia. And, uh, you know, got uh, our crew got arrested. It was on all the networks. Uh, and they used my film for that. And then the other one was 1985 uh, when the French blew up the boat and sunk it. I was on that cruise. And the guy that got killed was my uh, 
friend, you know, he's a fellow photographer. Mm -hmm. And I had to leave the boat a few weeks uh, before, you know, Greenpeace flew me back to San Francisco. And next thing I knew, you know, they blew the boat up. So I was on that. I did actions in San Francisco Bay against Chevron, you know, uh, uh, covered that, you know. Um, yeah, I, uh, one, of, one of the first things I did as a police officer, uh, I believe it was 1984, uh, was that there was a Greenpeace ship uh, right out <laughs> in, San, in San Pablo Harbor, and they took all of those guys off of it, and we had to arrest them. And uh, so uh, one of the other cops you know, I was around Boo! at that time. Boo. Yeah, I, I was I was sort of sympathetic to the Greenpeacers, and and one of the cops gave me a hard time because <laughs> I felt bad about arresting them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, hey, you know when we, uh, uh, I forget what year it was. I think it was eighty four or something, maybe. You know when the Richmond cops had a it really bad reputation. I was Richmond. So three was, of us. <laughs> Three of us dressed up like Chevron workers. You know, we had like white coveralls and uh, white hard hats and all that. We crawled on our bellies. We snuck into the ortho uh, chemical uh, building. Hits and we, we shut off and chained all the pumps dumping effluent. And when the Richmond cops came, they arrested everybody except me because I had a big TV camera. And... Uh, but they took my film magazine. We were shooting 16 millimeter film in the day, and somebody from Channel Four picked me up and gave me a ride home. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, uh, we, and I, I didn't get arrested, we guys. We took guys off a ship, so uh, it, it wasn't the ortho one. Uh, John, I, I'm glad that we finally have you in our in our thing, so that when you call, you'll immediately be put on the panel because oh, yes. because i gotta tell you john every time you've called you, you're a new one of our newer callers you've really been interesting as hell you know well, thank you. i mean we're just beginning to get the tip of the iceberg about your life hey you want you want to see something i'll show you something right. okay hang on a second he's fascinating isn't he mark can you yeah. see this what yeah what is that it's a shark that's me no that's me in the blue and a Canadian filmmaker on the top of Aconcagua. It's the highest mountain in uh, Argentina. And I was talking about Bruce Herbert, right? Well, I was carrying Bruce Herbert's ashes there, and I deposited them on the top of the highest mountain wow. in South America. Wow. He was a member of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, too, so the sisters were real happy. Oh, I remember the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Yeah, they're great. They made me a saint. They did, St. Bennett. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's pretty good, pretty good stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, I, uh, 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 so, I mean, you climb to the top of a mountain. Boy, yeah. I'm telling you, you're exhausting me. <laughs> you're exhausting me. Uh, I tried to climb to the top of a mountain once and never made it because I didn't get to the top before the sun was going down. So we had to get off the mountain. That was Mount Shasta, and that was only fourteen. Oh, oh, that was yeah, only fourteen thousand yeah. feet. I thought you were pretending to be Sisyphus. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, going up that mountain was very dangerous because there were constant avalanches. Because it, the whole mountain is like oh, yeah. one rock piled up on top of another. So every time you'd move up two steps, you'd go back one. It was very frustrating. Mm -hmm. I was a young boy at the time, and I could do it. By the way, before we go, I just want to ask uh, one question of Rob. Rob, what is the shirt you've got on you? You've, you've got a, a logo on there. Radio station I used to work at. W which one? Walk FM, W A L K. Hatchog, Long Island. Ah, okay. Hatchog. Yeah. And so th that explains your excellent microphone. I still have shirts. I stole it from there. I still have t-shirts <laughs> from almost every station I ever worked at. I even have a good guy's t-shirt. Sweatshirt. Wow. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'll wear that some night. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's it's not a real one. It's a knockoff. I, I forgot to keep mine. <laughs> I, yeah. Hey, listen. Uh, thank you, Phil. Appreciate it. Rob? Wonderful having you here tonight. Uh, John, you just, you know, it, it's great to have you as, as a member of our citizens panel. You add nicely. Yeah, thank you. And, and by, by the way, John, you have a right to remain silent. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, okay. And 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 uh, Mark, always great to hear from. Whenever we see your face coming on, I go, wow, we're gonna have a nice time tonight. And mm-hmm. uh, and and Bob Ebert and a great panel. I mean, just all intelligent people, with the exception of Phil. You know, but yeah. that's it. Sorry, I called you Larry, Bob. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, what I'd like you to do uh, is wave goodbye to everybody so they can uh, say, hey, there they go. There goes the citizen panel, folks. And uh, let me hang up on them. I hate to do that. It's so rude. But I have to get the phones ready for the next show. Otherwise, uh, they'll start calling and people will have problems and so on. Hey, listen, that's it for tonight. That's it for the week. Uh, good show tonight. Good panel. That's what it's all about. We'll see you again uh, on um, on Tuesday. Uh, at not, and by the way, at 9.30 before we go on is Damian Chaplin. And then uh, I'm on at uh, 10 o'clock. Hey, this is all Eastern time. Then at midnight is what's on next, which is the intersection with Jack and Amy. And right after that is Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again Tuesday, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody. I forgot to turn off my camera. See? Old habits die hard. See, everybody. Bye. <laughs> oh, I don't believe what I just did.